If you've been thinking about starting cloud engineering in 2025, you've probably heard that it's too late. The market is overcrowded, AI is taking everyone's jobs, and only those with five years of experience can get hired. It sounds terrifying, but is all of that really true? I'm Suleiman, I've worked in tech for a decade, I run my own AI cloud security consultancy, and through my Cloud Engineer Academy, I've helped more than 400 people switch to the cloud. In this video, I'll debunk the myth that it's too late to start, reveal the current state of the cloud industry that most people aren't talking about, and if you stay until the very end, I'll give away my proven first principles blueprint for engineers that's helped complete beginners land six-figure cloud engineering roles at AWS in 2025. So why do people believe it's too late to start cloud engineering? There is three reasons. Firstly, there is the rumor of saturation. Everywhere that you look, Reddit threads, LinkedIn, YouTube, people say that I've got certifications and I can't land a job or that I've been trying for two years and nobody is giving me an interview. And here is the hard truth. The market isn't saturated. The problem is that more than 96% of candidates that apply for these roles do not have the skill set required. And sorry to burst your bubble, but certifications will never get you hired. And neither will those projects that you've built on the AWS console. So when most people hit a wall and they can't get a breakthrough, instead of just doubling down and building real hands-on projects, they complain and blame the market. Next is the buzz around the great cloud exit. A very small percentage of companies are moving their workloads from the cloud back to on-prem, leading to headlines that suggest that the demand for cloud is dwindling. In reality, 89% of organizations are actually doubling down and increasing their cloud budgets for 2025. And finally, there's a concern about AI and automation. With auto scaling, infrastructure's code, and a shock around the world deep seek, people are fearing that cloud engineering will be fully automated. Naturally, it raises the questions, why would companies hire me if AI can do my job today. But here is the thing, you didn't know any better. And to be honest, I understand. You've seen the headlines and thought maybe I did miss my chance. But let's zoom out for a moment because the demand for cloud engineers continues to explode. In fact, AWS recently announced a global shortage of 6 million cloud professionals. And over the next five years, the cloud computing market is set to double, soaring to $2 trillion. And literally just last month, Project Stargate unveiled a $500 billion investment in AI infrastructure, which is of course deployed on the cloud. Yet, despite this skyrocketing demand, there's a paradox. Companies still struggle to fill open positions even though they receive thousands of applications. Now, I personally talk with CEOs and decision makers almost every single day, and one of their biggest pain points is having cloud engineering roles sit empty for months. How can there be such a shortage when there are so many people applying? In my view, a lot of aspiring cloud engineers are stuck doing things the old way. These outdated tactics that can make it feel like it's too late, even though the market itself is bigger than it's ever been before. So on one side, companies can't find the right talent. And on the other side, candidates feel locked out of an industry that's clearly still booming. But why does this paradox even exist, Suleiman? Great question. To answer that, we have to retrace how cloud engineering has evolved because it has moved through three distinct phases. And once you understand how it's evolved, you can better prepare yourself to build the right skills and actually stand out from the crowd. So we had phase one, the pioneer era. Between 2010 and 2016, companies were only beginning to experiment with AWS services. So if you knew how to spin up a couple of EC2 instances or S3 buckets, that alone could land you a job. It sounds almost too easy, right? That's because there just wasn't enough people with even basic cloud experience back then. I saw this firsthand when I was working. Then between 2017 and 2022, we entered what I I called the migration era phase two. It's like the gold rush in 1848, but instead of the gold, it's companies rushing to shift their entire data centers to AWS. Engineers who understood compute, storage, and maybe even containerization were at a premium, and certifications were valuable because they proved that you knew the core services. Now, here is where everything changed. Around 2023, the spotlight shifted, 
again. We entered the business value era, phase three. By that point, nearly every company was operating in the cloud in some form. So the big question became less about simply migrating. Instead, it's about building cloud native, optimizing for costs, securing everything from the ground up and tying every single technical decision to real business outcomes. And this is exactly why some people in 2025 still feel that it's too late to start cloud engineering. That's why we have a paradox. The people struggling to break through are starting stuck in phase one or phase two. They are preparing like it's 2017 or the post pandemic boom in 2021 when every company was hiring anyone they could get their hands on. But guess what? The game has changed. The infinite money printer isn't on anymore because Jerome Powell pulled the plug. Cloud engineers today are asked different questions. How will this architecture impact revenue? Or why is this solution more secure? It's all about logical and financially smart engineering decisions. Now, that might sound a little bit daunting, but trust me, you don't need a decade of experience. You just need the blueprint that actually works. Because I'll tell you what, after working a decade in tech, delivering multi-million dollar projects and working at the cutting edge of cloud engineering, I saw a gap in how engineers were being trained. Certifications weren't enough, memorizing services wasn't enough, and even years of experience didn't translate into true engineering excellence. And that's why I've built my own methodology from scratch. One designed to create not just great cloud engineers, but world-class problem solvers who can thrive in any tech environment. Inside of my academy, my students aren't just learning AWS or deploying projects. They are mastering my first principles blueprint for engineers, a system that gives them an unfair advantage and is built on three clear pillars, technical excellence, engineering leadership, and first principles thinking. And this isn't just theory. It's the same system that allowed me to quit my own job and work for myself and build multiple technology businesses and given me the freedom that I've always wanted to hire people to scale my growth and scale my businesses. It's the same system that my students like Jay, Mac, John, Matt, Matthew and Alex are leveraging to get hired in today's market. And yes, AWS has been hiring my students because whether you're brand new to the cloud or already experienced, anyone can thrive if they are leveraging my first principles engineer blueprint. So let's start with pillar number one, technical excellence. Now, this isn't about memorizing all 200 AWS services. It's about building a strong foundation in core cloud concepts like networking, compute, storage, and security, and knowing why you choose one solution over another. It also means embracing infrastructure as code with Terraform, AWS CloudFormation, or the CDK, so you can define your entire environments in version control templates, instead of clicking around the AWS console like some other people might I tell you to do. And it's 2025, AI and cloud security are critical. So being comfortable with SageMaker and understand IAM and VPC deeply will help you stand out. The key is not staying at the surface level. It's actually building meaningful projects and then breaking them to fix them and to document what you are learning. And that's what impresses employers today. But your technical skills aren't just enough, which is where you need pillar number two, engineering leadership. And we all work with humans, right? I know Sam Altman is saying that they're going to achieve AGI in 2025, but the reality is your ability to thrive in the cloud world hinges on how well you communicate, negotiate trade-offs, and support your team. If you can confidently explain complex architectures to non-technical stakeholders, keep documentation clear and up-to-date, and balance factors like costs, security, and performance, you will stand out even if you are new. Now, true engineering leadership also shows up in how you help your teammates through troubleshooting and shared problem solving. And ownership is huge. When something goes wrong, do you step up and figure out how to fix it? That kind of accountability combined with good communication is what makes companies say that we need this person on our team. But even with great technical skills and engineering leadership, you can still struggle if you don't learn to think critically about your decisions and the solutions that you create. That's where pillar three comes in. First principles thinking. It's all about breaking problems down to their core fundamental truths instead of blindly copying architectures that might not fit the problem that you are trying to solve. For instance, don't say we need Kubernetes because everyone else uses it. Ask if a simpler serverless approach could work. Keep digging for the root cause when troubleshooting performance or security issues. Embrace any constraints like cost, compliance, or availability to fuel more creative solutions, just like DeepSeek was able to do so. They were 
were constrained because the US had banned them from using any of the latest Nvidia chips. So they went back to square one and built a better model than OpenAI for a fraction of the cost. This mindset makes you stand out because you're not just following tutorials, you're designing what truly solves the problem at hand. And in this business value era, companies want engineers who can tie every technical decision to real bottom line benefits. And first principles thinking is key to doing exactly that. So let's answer the question. Is it too late to start cloud engineering in 2025? Yes, it is if you're still using the old approach and ignoring how the industry has evolved to phase number three. You feel like it's oversaturated because you're blend in with the masses, but no, it's not too late. If you adapt and embrace these three pillars of technical excellence, engineering leadership, and first principles thinking. Companies are still hungry for cloud engineers at all levels who can solve real problems and demonstrate genuine depth. So you either adapt or you get left behind. It's so simple. And if you don't want to get left behind, I've just released my full course on AWS, which takes you from A to Z on everything that you need to know. So just click right here and go give it a watch.